Darius Garland was out with a sore back, probably from carrying the team. Hardship exception pickup Brandon Goodwin, who just signed a two-way deal for the rest of the year, dropped 21 points in a close win over the Pelicans. The under-talked about sophomore and 2020's fifth overall draft pick in Isaac Okoro scored a crucial 14 points while showing off some of his patented defensive chops. Directly after Rondo went down, GM Kobe Altman and the Cleveland Cavaliers front office not only stole Rajon Rondo from Rob Palenka and the Lakers, but with a lot of teams, including my Raptors, signing him to a 10-day before it expired, Cleveland stole a 26-year-old shifty and speedy guard off the free agent market in the aforementioned Brandon Goodwin. You're about to find out every reason for why the Cavs' management continues to be incredible, and stay tuned to find out why Ohio's one NBA franchise could be legitimate threats to shift the landscape of the modern game with their tall ball onslaught. Right quick, just 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Half a year ago from now in the 2021 offseason, Cleveland made two major commitments in the front court as Jarrett Allen re-signs on a seemingly way too hefty $100 million contract over four years. Everyone assumed that deal was outlandish because Allen was unfairly labeled as an old-school, outdated five-man who wasn't capable of sticking with quicker, new-school centers who, unlike him, could drive and shoot. Realistically, Allen's always been solid at sticking with his matchup and has even showed the proximity to switch on to smaller guards around half his size. Signing Ricky Rubio was a solid move, but committing another $67 million to another big man, a perceived draft bust in Laurie Markkinen, made most of us think the Cavs were headed towards the lottery again. Given they had already drafted Mobley at number 3 and signed Markkinen 24 days after picking up Jared Allen, whether you were a believer or not, in the back of our minds I think everyone assumed Cleveland would have a severe lack of floor spacing in the commonly referred to as space and pace, three-point shooting modern NBA. If you're wondering whatever happened to the dominance of centers and hard-nosed defense, well, that leads us into GM Kobe Altman's plan for his franchise, which wasn't to match what most bottom feeders were failing at, which is drafting or acquiring one-dimensional backcourt and wing players, praying their unfit player development staff will turn them into the next Golden State. Kobe and his team in the front office were out to change the way basketball games were won in the modern NBA. The starting trio of big men gracing the Cavs front court includes three seven-footers who've given them a top three defensive rating directly behind the top of the league Phoenix Suns and Golden State Warriors. All three big men in Markkanen, Mobley, and Allen are extremely mobile, allowing them to practically guard one through five. In terms of the Cavs' front office, they were far from done with their bold activity. On Christmas Day, they rightfully extended one of the best coaches in the NBA right now, J.B. Bickerstaff, through until 2027, rewarding him for the team's shockingly dominant turnaround. Then, swiftly acting after the valuable floor general in Ricky Rubio tragically tore his ACL, in a three-team trade involving the New York Knicks, Altman convinced LA Lakers GM Rob Palenka to give him Rajon Rondo. And it's almost as if Palenka was giving Altman brotherly love here, helping him make up for the loss of Rubio in this deal, considering LA got nothing in return. Since getting DNPs under Frank Vogel in Hollywood, in seven games so far with the Cavs, Rajon Rondo's receiving 20 minutes per night, He's a plus 11 and is averaging a nice 7.4 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, and a steal, taking 4 three-pointers each game and making a very respectable 38% of them. Playoff Rondo's rounding into form, and the Lakers' suddenly dysfunctional system is unfortunately missing out. The Forest City has brought new life for the soon-to-be 36-year-old future Hall of Famer. Big-time respect to both Rondo as well as GM Altman, for knowing the Cavs couldn't have lost the production of Rubio and continued their winning ways. More on how they've made up for the loss of the Spaniard is coming up, but since taking a 14-point loss to Golden State on January 9th, Cleveland is a beastly 9-2, clearly having taken lessons from losing to debatably the best NBA team. 
With this upload in the now seven Cavaliers videos I've made on this channel in 2021-22, we've gone in depth on everyone from the rookie sensation Evan Mobley to the breakout Darius Garland and Jarrett Allen, even the contributions of Kevin Love, Dean Wade, and most recently Dylan Windler. More breakdowns on the Cavs' top players to come in future Cleveland videos I post, but one man that's been unfairly overlooked in those videos is Isaac Okoro. The sophomore out of Auburn University is an explosive and versatile perimeter threat who's a prolific slasher and elite perimeter defender. Against Kyrie Harden and the Cavs a few weeks ago, Okoro's clutch clamps sealed a W. Firstly, give credit to Lori for sticking with Harden, but watch how Isaac perfectly sticks with Kyrie on this elusive fake cut to the basket that would have baited the majority of defenders to the point where Kyrie loses his balance and Okoro capitalizes with a dunk that lit up Mortgage Fieldhouse. Here we go. Here we go. Signifying Isaac's elite defensive chops, the recently turned 21-year-old's up-and-comer has the number 6 best defensive rating among all NBA small forwards, right behind LeBron James, and directly ahead of reputable perimeter stoppers and two champions in Miami's P.J. Tucker and Milwaukee's Chris Middleton. Isaac's wingspan only stretches two inches further than his height, but the man uses his athletically swift frame and impressive 8'4 standing reach to utilize his range to the best of his advantage. In year two of his pro career, Okoro's percentages have slightly improved, so as he goes through a few more seasons, expect the man to develop into one of the association's premier 3 and D guides if he stays on track. Initially, it was reported that my hometown Raptors had signed Brandon Goodwin to a 10-day, but he never ended up suiting up for Toronto, and after that deal expired, the man of the hour and Kobe Altman swooped in to pick up the former Westchester Nick, and immediately Goodwin was a perfect fit in Cavalier threads, as the nifty offense manufacturing guard scored 13 points, making 6 of his 9 field goals in his opening game against Atlanta. He's already played in 11 games with Cleveland, but missing Darius Garland last night, Goodwin's presence most came in handy. Brandon got a season-most 27 minutes, fully capitalizing on that extra playing time, scoring a season and game-high 21 points on 8-for-11 shooting from the field and 3-of-4 from distance. The hardship exception pickup has proved to be a bucket-getting machine, and now combined with Rondo's efforts, miraculously, Cleveland's front office has made up for the loss of Rubio and potentially saved their season. What's the most shocking part about the Cavaliers? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Stacked Entertainment who says, judging by his floor general skills, he has a much improved version of Lonzo's passing. He's talking about Ayo Dosumu, but defense is more like an Avery Bradley or Tony Allen. So to me, if we're looking for a two-way player to compare Ayo to, I'll pick three people. Thanks for every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.